Good morning, class. Good morning. My name is Nikki Johnson from the Orlando Branch School. I'll be your moderator for this morning's lecture. We'd like to ask you to please turn your cell phones on off, silent, or vibrate at this time. Welcome to the 2017 Unity in Yas Symposium. This is a series of lectures presented by students of the IDMR. The Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated is a school, it is not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a non-profit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity until this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in Springfield, Ohio in the year of 1931. We were later incorporated in the state of California in the year of 1958. Since that time, branch schools have been established throughout the United States and in various parts of the world. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our State Dean and the Dean of the Orlando Branch, Dr. Jacqueline Mixon. In this school, we teach and preach using the true, correct, original names and titles for our Heavenly Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit as was contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh, this name has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title for the word or son is Elohim. This title has been improperly substituted by God. The true name for the Holy Spirit, whether manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This name has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are both titles, they are not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lords many and there are Gods many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, meaning that Elohim is the title that our Heavenly Father Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language has any letter or character in their alphabet that will produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1600 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible untrue renderings for the correct name of our Heavenly Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is spirit. And in this state of existence, he is inscrutable and incomprehensible to the natural senses of man. He is the ultimate source substance, limits, and bounds of all and everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this orange and yellow fiery colored cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you how that everything on the chart abides within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the sum total of the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing mankind could not perceive of him in this state, he purposed right within himself to take on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim. 
This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah whom the whole world erroneously calls Jesus Christ now there is only one name given unto salvation and we must know that name so the simple yet intelligent question we should all ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane a further understanding of this name and this title can be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. In this school, we also teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him this threefold tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh later instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The tabernacle pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place and a court round about. Three principal compartments yet making up the one tabernacle pattern. We go on to show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. We have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives of our institute and they are as follows. Number one is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Number two is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Number three is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Number four is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Number five is to extirpate current superstitions, skepticism, and ignorance. Number six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Number seven is to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Number eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Number nine is to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained that there is none other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And number 10 is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is to speak the truth. We'll dedicate this morning's lecture with a prayer to be given by Dr. Angel Williams of the Orlando branch. Our scripture will be Romans the 8th chapter to be read by Dr. Seth Williams of the Orlando branch. Good morning. Let us all bow our hearts and minds unto Yahweh our Father through his son Yahshua the Messiah. Father, we'd like to thank you for allowing each and every one of us to be allowed to come and sit into fellowship, praising your name. Father, thank you for choosing each and every one of us to know you in spirit and in truth. Because many believe and think that they know you, Father. But you, would allow, you have allowed us to know you in spirit and in truth. Make us be obedient. Make us not take this for granted, Father. 
all we can say is thank you. And that's not even good enough, but thank you, Father. Make this gospel a living reality in our life. Don't make us just bust our chops, Father. Make us walk and live it and take on a new nature because that old man has to die. Make us die daily. Father, we ask that you allow us to all get back to our home safely. And while we're here for these last few hours, just make us put away the distractions. Cause us to just hear you, see you, not the vessel, but you, Father. Talk to us. It's an individual thing, Father. We know that, and we thank you. With these and many other blessings, let us all say hallelujah. I'll be reading to you Romans, the eighth chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Tran of the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Romans, the eighth chapter, is found on page 208 in the back portion of the Holy Name Bible. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Yahshua the Messiah, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, Yahweh sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, because of sin, to condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against Yahweh, for it is not subject to the law of Yahweh, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please Yahweh. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of Yahweh dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of the Messiah, he is none of his. And if the Messiah be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is alive because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahshua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Yahshua from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the desires of the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye, through the spirit, do mortify the desires of the flesh, ye shall live. For as many are, as are led by the spirit of Yahweh, they are the sons of Yahweh. For if ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Abba, my Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of Yahweh. And if the children, then heirs, heirs of Yahweh, and joint heirs with the Messiah. If we suffer with the Messiah, excuse me, if we suffer with him, we may be glorified together also. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creation waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of Yahweh. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of Yahweh. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. 
For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the sons according to the will of Yahweh. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love Yahweh, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn of many, among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If Yahweh be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of Yahweh's elect? It is Yahweh that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is the Messiah that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of Yahweh, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of the Messiah? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake are we killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of Yahweh, which is in the Messiah, Yahshua the Messiah, our Savior. I've read Romans, the eighth chapter. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our first speaker for this morning's lecture will be Dr. Donald Mitchell, Dean of the Spanish Town Jamaica Branch. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I must welcome you to another spiritual lecture that is given to you by the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research Incorporated. And as the moderator told you, we are a school and we are not a church. And I must also thank the Orlando um, Branch School for putting on this great, great event. It is glorious and I'm thankful. Uh, and I must also thank the brethren for their love and support. And also the brethren from Jamaica, Kingston and Spanish Town Branch School sent their love and we are a family. But Yahweh prepared this vision and revelation. It was given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley for the saving of mankind's soul. Because Yahweh saw the destruction of mankind's soul and he prepared a way of salvation. Because spiritually we were polluted in lies, hell, death, and the grave. And a lie brought down the entire human race. And Yahshua says in John 8:32 that we are to know the truth and the truth shall make us free. When you come to these lectures, you take your pen and your papers and you jot down. There's a mystery of righteousness, who is Yahshua the Messiah. And there's a mystery of unrighteousness, who is that devil. You are no match for that devil. And Yahweh set up a way, he gave us a tabernacle pattern, many, a cloud of witnesses. 
He gave us the law and the testimonies. He gave us these charts. Because a mind, a human mind cannot conceive of something in abstraction. So that's why it says, go to the law and to the testimony. Take the natural, that's Romans 1, 19 and 20, to understand the spiritual. Because you might be at a level where you can understand something. But the aim of this teaching is to bring up, bring up souls, the ignorant souls. You might know already. So next year, we are going to invite our friends, our enemies, and take everybody. So we will have an extended family. So we have to begin at Moses, that's what he said. And we want to be obedient to Yahweh. And some people underestimate the power of those written words in the book, in the scriptures. And they are not to be taken lightly. So we have our Elohim book, that's also scriptures. So all the, all the evidence and the material should be working in, in one accord. They should not be opposing each other. So they should be working in unity. We have charts, we have Elohim books, um, we have Bibles, transcripts, so forth. So they should be working together to show Yahshua. The aim of this teaching is to show the resurrection, the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our heart, which is the kingdom of heaven being revealed into man's soul. By, so Yahweh is making mortal man to receive immortality. <laughs> That's a miracle. And it is explained by this teaching. How is it that a mortal man can have immortality? To whom? To what? So all the principles are laid on true or by the foundation of the gospel. So if you're going to pick up, show that Passover was fulfilled. Yeshua is our Passover. He's that lamb. If you're going to show baptism beginning at the Red Sea, he's that living water. <laughs> so everything is through the gospel. That's how we fulfill all those scriptures. Now another thing, the people in the world, why the scriptures are still relevant, they were fulfilled. Matthew 5, 17, please. They weren't destroyed. People are still saying that the, the, the enemy is the liar. He's still saying that Yahshua was not fulfilling. He's setting up. He has not fulfilled these. So we need to correct them, which is our duty. We are, all, we are the only two ministers. So we have to begin at Moses and show them where they in the church are having grape juice and crackers. We have to go back to Moses and say, see there, it was not grape juice and crackers. <laughs> it's in the book. It was roasted lamb, bitter herbs, and unleavened bread. So we have to contend for this gospel. And the same way you prepare yourself for your physical job, you go to university to get the knowledge, to learn the tools, how to use it. It is the same thing in here. It is the responsibility of all of us to learn this gospel. And if I say to you, how would you show a person that the, to the learn the prophet that, this, that Yahshua did fulfill it? The, 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 the um, Passover. How? Sit in your seat. Think. Could you go to the land of the prophet and show it in the law? Show it in the prophet? How Yahshua fulfilled it and the spiritual reality? Mm -hmm. That's why people are still telling lies. This liar is still working. Yahshua is the spirit of truth. So we have to come good with our tools. So when we go to the land of the prophet, it will show you that see there, that lamb was taken out on the 14th. They are having the Passover. How is it that they have the Passover and the, and the first Sunday is the 14th? Ezra 6.19 in the prophecy says the same thing. The 14. So it's in the book. When was he crucified? Why do they have April? Even now, they have um, Easter in April. You see, they know, but they, they have a Z, but not according to knowledge. So the Passover was the 14th of Abib. So Yeshua fulfilled all this that was set up 1,500 years. So we still have to go to the book to prove it, that he did die, he, did bear, he was buried, and he rose again the third day, and he fulfilled. I'm coming to that scripture, but just give me a second there. What they did also, Yahweh, who is eternal, in Isaiah 63, verse 16, it says, Doubtless, for though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, though, O Yahweh, art our Father, our Redeemer, thy name is from everlasting. 
Exodus 3.15, he says, This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Yahweh was the first one who introduced transliteration. You can never translate a name. You know what the King James Version did? That's how without a vision, the people perish. They removed the name Yahweh and put Lord God. How is it that you transliterate? You are not supposed to translate a name. But they said that they translated a name from a name to two titles. How can you translate a person's name from a name to two titles? That doesn't make sense. Micah 5 and 2 says, Out of Bethlehem, Yahshua should come forth, that is to be ruler in Israel, who is going forth is from the days of eternity. Go to Israel now and ask them if they have a letter J in their language. There's no J up to today. The letter J is the last letter added to the English alphabet. It is impossible for his name to be called Jesus Jehovah Anja. In Acts 4 and 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name that is given among men whereby we must be saved. Saved in the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And you are saying it doesn't matter. You want me to call you Jezebel, your wife Jezebel? <laughs> it matters. Salvation is in his name, Yahshua, Savior, Redeemer. Redeem us from our dead souls. All right, so Elohim means savior too, or Yah, who, who is our strength, is the pluralistic title that he chose for himself. And Yahshua is the son. In John 5, 43, he says, I am coming in my father's name, and he received me not. Let another come in his own name, him he will receive. And Jesus Christ came in his father's name, and the world, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, many run there at. But narrow is the way and the path that leadeth to life, but just a few. And it was an angel that gave the name Yahweh at the burning bush. And you have to see this angel, Yahweh it says in Exodus 23, 20, Behold, I sent an angel before thee. It is that angel that is keeping the words of Yahweh because holy men, holy men wrote as they were inspired. So it was by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. That's why Timothy, 2 Timothy, that's the second scripture I want. 2 Timothy 2, 15 and 16. So they wrote as they were inspired. The Holy Spirit was upon them and they wrote. So it wasn't their doing. So he sent an angel to keep them in the way. So he says, obey his voice. Because he will not pardon your transgression. Because my name, don't forget that part, you know. My name is in him. That was Yahushua back there. He gave an astral projection and he gave the name at the burning bush right there. And you're showing for this burning bush is correlated to our heart. That the name should be written in the spiritual tables of our heart. And our mind. All right, read those two scriptures, please. Matthew 5 and 17. Yes. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. So I am. He uh, says, Think not that I am come to destroy the law and the prophets. He's not going to destroy his witnesses because he's speaking to the law and to the testimony. He's using his witnesses because they are still telling lies on him. So he still needs his witnesses. And he need, you will need to line up the things. Line upon line, according to that's the third scripture, Isaiah 28. We have to line them up to prove that he fulfilled them and brought in the spiritual reality so we can't get rid of the witnesses. Read on. I am not come to destroy, yes. but to fulfill. But to fulfill, yes, he fulfilled them, but he didn't destroy them. How could you go be going, this is, this is a trial. How could you go to, go to court and destroy your, your own witnesses? Hmm. The trial is still going on because they are still telling lies on him. I meet Christian up to recently that they are still saying he was establishing. They are still saying that grape juice and crackers. They are still saying the baptism is physical. Some are still saying the resurrection is physical. So we have to go in the book and show them. So keep the witnesses. They are not destroyed, they are fulfilled. They are cut off, yes, we agree to that. But they are not destroyed. Read on. For verily I say unto you, Yes, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. And you know what he said in Luke 24? The law is the first five books of our Bible. He said he fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Others are saying he didn't. So we have to go and show. So the law is the first five books of our Bible. To the law and to the testimony. And the testimony is from Yahshua to Malachi. Then you have from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He showed where he fulfilled in the spiritual reality. Read on, please. 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments mm -hmm. and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. All right, thank you, Doc. The other scripture, please. It was Second Timothy, right? Yes. Two, three, three, fifteen. Okay. Then Isaiah twenty-eight. Second Timothy three fifteen. Yes. And that from a child thou yes. ha thou hast known the holy scriptures. Known of a knowledge of the holy. You cannot exhaust those principles in there. You will never live a lifetime to exhaust the principles in those scripture. You have to search them and research them. And we can show you too. You will never live a lifetime to exhaust everything in that book. If you live for 200 years, you cannot. The infallibility and the unerring accuracy. That's the spirit law manifesting through those scriptures. That's why in everything there is that angel. That angel was manifesting, speaking and working back there with Daniel. Daniel said, Yahweh has sent his angel. What is that angel doing in the book? To shut the lion's mouth. The other story, they say that um, the farm of the fort with the Hebrew boys in the fire. The farm of the fort was like the son of Elohim. Isaiah said, I saw him sitting on, he has never left man, neither is Israel forsaken. I saw him, Yahweh, sitting on his throne, high and lifted up. In Matthew the 17th chapter, he revealed himself to them. At the resurrection, those two angels, it's that same angel. Mm -hmm. So you cannot get rid better of spirit or get off that angel. What are you going to do? We're not saying the angel is in the book, you know, because the book can't hold a man much more an angel. We are saying that the angel was always there, so the words are kept alive. Just like we have the age of sconch, the conscience back here. It was operating by faith. The law was written in them, and he has declared the end from the beginning. In the beginning, it was written in them. In the end, it is being written again by spirit law. Read on. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture. So why is he calling them the holy scripture? One is holy, and it is that holy angel of Yahweh. Who inspired the writer? Say so the scriptures are really the voice of Yahweh speaking. For thus said Yahweh. Isaiah said, The word of Yahweh came unto me expressly in a vision, saying. Mm -hmm. So that vision is spirit and that word is spirit, because the word of Yahweh is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. So he's, he's, these words that are written here, they are spirit words, spirit law. And the aim of this teaching is to have them written in our hearts. Because Israel was dead back here under dead covenant, under dead works. So he, the, 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 the psalmist David said, he restored my soul. Where is your soul? He resurrected the dead soul because of the great slaughter. This law was just added because of the transgression. So his mission is to restore soul. That's why when he came, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Because this law couldn't give us life. You needed a heart, a heart transplant. A new art. God, that was dead art. It wasn't beating. <laughs> there was no blood in it. No blood that could give life. We're going to touch upon it a little. All right, let's finish up there. Which are able to make thee wise. You see, the scriptures are able to make thee wise. Unto what? Salvation. Unto salvation. We are in the soul saving business. You better know that book. So when the Christians come up to you and say, I know that baptism is physical water. Go in that book. Show where it is all set up at the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. They were all baptized unto Moses in that cloud and in that sea. First Corinthians 10 chapter, pick it up. Don't get it. I'm just showing you how to use the tool. I'm not saying you didn't know. I'm just confirming again. Because some people will take offense. Then he speaks about Jeremiah 2.22. He says, Though thou wash thee with strong soap. If you even use soap, water can't wash away sin. And if you add soap, it cannot wash away sin. There are several scriptures here. When Yahshua said to John, Suffer it to be so now, John, for does it become us to fulfill? That's to the law and the testimony. Mm -hmm. Then he spoke to that woman at Jacob well. In John the fourth chapter. And he said, You would have asked of me and I would give thee living water. Which would be in thee a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Isn't that line upon line? Precept upon precept. A little from the law and a little from the prophet. Then on the day of Pentecost, he poured out. John said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Who show I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Not many days ends. You know what Ephesians 4 and 4 says? It's one body. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body. 
One hope of our calling, one faith and one immersion. And by one, First Corinthians 12, 13, by one spirit, are we yeah. all baptized into one body? Galatians 3, 27, when you have been baptized in Yahshua, you put on Yahshua the Messiah. The gift of Yahweh is eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. A new art that you no longer believe in physical water. You believe Titus 3 and 5 says you are washed. By re regeneration, by the blood and the, the blood, water, spirit, party, the well, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. That's how you use the tool. You cannot exhaust that Bible. That's right. Mm. So you sit, you search the scripture, and find them. Anything you ask us for, we can go in there. Three days, three nights, we are not boasting. Three days, three nights. How is it that he was on the earth three days? His true birthday. You, you, read, you learn these things already? You should learn them. Mm -hmm. 2300, 490 cycle. People say they're getting bored because they need something else. <laughs> you been bored? <laughs> All right, before I run the two covenants, I'm going to show you something. All right, go on, refinish those scriptures. Yahweh meant what he said about those being the holy scriptures. And Yahshua spoke about them in Luke 24. He said, you must begin at Moses. I'm going to come and tell. Anybody tell you that the scriptures are no longer re re relevant today? Send them to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave my contact. <laughs> Yahshua said, begin at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them. In the scriptures, the things concerning himself. All right. Then open it your understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Yeah. You sit here, you don't understand the scriptures. You have to understand. Because you are no match for that serpent. Mm -hmm. And when he was speaking in that same book, he said, the, the disciples told him, you have the words of eternal life. Jeremiah said, that words were found and I did eat them. He says, the ear tried words as the mouth tasted me. So how is the soul sustained by whom and by what? How is the soul kept alive? By knowledge. That's why it says, know the truth. You must know the truth. Don't go up there and tell people about baptism when you yourself don't know how it was fulfilled. Because you can't do that on your job. So Yahshua says, know the truth. And the truth shall make you free so you can free somebody else. All right. Finish up there. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through yes. faith, which is in Yahshua the Messiah. So it is not the, it's not the physical writing. It's the words of Yahshua to faith, make you wise unto salvation. Mm -hmm. Are you finished? Uh, we, uh, continue, it's not finished. All the scripture that is given by inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine. Including the Elohim book too and other, the, the transcript, because Yahweh inspired those who wrote them. For reproof. For, for reproof. For correction. And for correction. For instruction and for righteousness. For instruction. So what, if you put them away, what are you going to instruct from? Instruct from? Your own thoughts? I believe this. I believe that. Right. And that's said Yahweh. The prophet says, Yahweh spoke to them. Read. That the man of Yahweh may be perfect. May be perfect. Thoroughly furnished Thoroughly unto furnished. all good works. Unto all good works. All right. Isaiah 28 and 9, please. Isaiah 28, 9. Yes. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And this is confirming and it is working in accordance with the scriptures. It says, whom shall he teach? Listen, you know, listen carefully. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Doctrine is a body of principle. So if you understand water baptism, how it was set up and what the prophecy, for example, and how Yahshua translated to the reality, go out there and teach the But if you do not get it. Them that are weaned from the milk. So you're going to show the people that the land of prophet is the milk. It was set up back here by Yahushua who is the author. Yahshua the Messiah is the same Yahshua. Yahushua who is the finisher. That's why he said he's the beginning and he's the ending. He's the author A, he's the finisher F. He's the beginning B, he's the ending. He's, if you say author or finisher, beginning and end, he's still Yahshua. He's the creator, he's the destroyer and everything in between. Read on, please. And drawn from the breast. So you leave the law and the prophet and show that, yes, it was set up back there, but he fulfilled it. How are you going to show that he fulfilled it if you don't show them that where it was set up? And start to tell the person in the middle of the story. You have to go and explain and show them who it and when, where and why. 1,500 years before, it is your duty. Read. For a precept must be upon precept. <laughs> precept, that's the spirit law working. No man could put this together. This is not the concept of any carnal man. 
You were going to church all your life. Why you didn't explain that? <laughs> huh? You see that it takes the Holy Spirit to unlock the scriptures. Yeah. Mm. They are the Holy Scriptures and they are the words of Yahweh. And it was hidden in a mystery. One Colossians 1.26 after this scripture. Precept upon precept. And 1 Timothy 3.16. Precept upon precept. So we have debt. Debt line. Our blood line. Then we have a water line. We have a spirit line and we have a forty line or an ascension line. So it says line upon line, precept upon precept. Read on. Line upon line. So line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little. A little from the law. And there a little. And a little from the prophets. For with stammering lips. You want me to show you the little from the law and the little from the prophets? Watch this. Yes. It was told that you die on a cross. They were told to take out a lamp, put blood up on the two side posts, the upper door posts, different from a basin. Your hands are your two side posts. When Yahshua came, he had nail in his right and nail in his left and nail in his feet. A crush of thorn up on his head. Isn't that so? How many years that was prophesied before? 1,500 years. You want to prove that you would have a crush of thorn? The ram caught in the ticket by his own. That's Yahshua, who, who at the end of his ministry played, played that ram, the role of that ram. Caught by the law and the prophet. They didn't kill him. It was already predicted by the law and the prophet that he would die. That's what the book says. How, oh, 1 Corinthians 15 says, How oh, that he would die according to the scriptures and that he was buried. Jonah had that reed wrap around his head and he said, Salvation is of Yahweh. Hmm. But Yahweh put it this way so that one man couldn't take the glory and say, See it, I fathom it out. He put a little, just like I come in here and I have something, I break it up and put a little over there. So one person would find a piece over there, one would find. And that's the same thing with the speakers. I bring out something, you build on it. You bring out something, I build on it. Working in the unity of the spirit. All right, read on. For with stammering lips and another tongue so will when you have speak. So when you have death here, Adam died. No, I put the blood upon the people's head. They had to kill the lamb down here in the land of Egypt and put the blood upon the two sides, put the upper door post. Then this, the priest had to put blood upon the four arms of the altar. Then Yahshua died. You, you line them up. It says, a stammering lips. Blood, 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 blood. We didn't see this in the church. With a stammering lip. And another tongue, which is the tongue, which is the preaching of the gospel. We didn't know about death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. Blood, water, spirit, forty in the name of Yahshua. Read on. With, for with stammering lips yes. and another tongue, will he speak to this people? Will he speak to, this is how he's speaking to his people. Read. To whom he said, yes. this is the rest. So when you see it set up like this, he says, this is the rest. You don't want rest? You have to teach this way to get the rest. This is the rest when the teaching is done like this. Reader, anything that is said about Yahshua, it can be lined up. Mm -hmm. Whether from the Elohim book or from the transcript or the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. Because you must show where it is pointing to Yahshua. Read. This is the rest wherewith yes. ye may cause the weary to rest. Read. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. Many don't obey it. Read on. But the word of Yahweh was unto them. Yes. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Yes. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little, a little and there a little. Here a little and there a little. When you go over Daniel, you pick up also that stone that was rolled there. All right, finish up, Doc. That they may go and fall backward word. and be broken and snared and taken. Mm -hmm, if they don't. Wherefore, hear the word of Yahweh, ye scornful men, that okay. rule this people which is in Jerusalem. All right, thank you, Doc. So this teaching, it is great. It is the greatest teaching that has ever given to mankind. All right, are you all in two scriptures there? 1 Corinthians yes. 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So by one spirit we are all baptized into one body. That's the spirit of Yahshua. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Yes. Whether we be bond or free. Yes. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. And to drink into one spirit. That's the spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. But I'd ask for... Um, Colossians. Colossians, yes. 
Colossians 1 26. Yes. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages no. and from generations. This was a mystery in from ages and from generations. And uh, the scripture to work with that one was first Timothy. Because you, you read second, don't leave that doc. It was first Timothy 3:16 after this. But finish doc. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations. So it was a mystery. That's why you couldn't figure it out on your own. That's why we couldn't unlock the scriptures. Because the book was delivered to one to read and he could read it. It was a mystery. Hidden. That is to be revealed. That's why he gave you a vision and revelation. Mystery. And the Bible is still a mystery to, to the world out there. If you hear them talk from the book, you, you're shocked. Some nonsense coming out of their mouths. Still a mystery to them. How you do, how do, do you unlock a mystery? Hmm. You can't find out a mystery. Mm -hmm. So this is why this is a vision and a revelation. Because I will stand up on my watch to see what Yahweh has to say to me. Mm. And he said, write the vision and, and make it plain upon the tables. This is the vision written. No man can discredit this. Mm -hmm. Make it plain upon tables mm -hmm. that he may run that readeth it. Mm -hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. At the end of the world it is speaking and has not lied. Infallibility and unerring accuracy of those scriptures when, the, when they are corrected by the Holy Spirit. Don't underestimate the word of Yahweh. Read on. But now is made manifest to his son. But now is made manifest, mean clearly seen to us. Read. To whom Yahweh would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the nations. What is it? Which is the Messiah in you, the hope of glory. So how do you get into Yahshua? <clears throat> how does he get into us? By one spirit. We are all baptized into one body that's in the body of Yahshua by the preaching of the gospel. So it's a mystery being revealed. And don't underestimate the death of Ashwa there. Don't discredit it. Mm -hmm. Don't go act as if it's nothing. Right. And you don't have to preach the gospel. You don't have to talk about it. Mm -hmm. All right. Finish. Are you finished? Whom we preach. So, who, 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 who me what? Mm -hmm. Whom we preach. So we are preaching. He said, go eat therefore. You know the commandment he gave them after the cross. So you're saying that old covenant is fulfilled. <laughs> And there's a new covenant. What is written in the new covenant? What's the command name? Mm -hmm. You're in class for 20 years preaching the gospel. What is it? What is requested of us? <laughs> you think you can figure out find about that book? You think you can finish everything that is in there? You think you can live a lifetime to know everything that is in there? What, what is the commandment now? What did he say you should do? Huh? <laughs> he said, go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Mm -hmm. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And he that believeth not shall be damned. You heard that? You think that is still applicable today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're not doing any works of righteousness now. We're preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And in, front, in Matthew 24, he said, this gospel of the kingdom should be preached in all the world. Then shall what? The end. <laughs> so the end came out. We still have to be preaching it until that day of the universal revelation. It must be preached because that devil is an opposer. And you think he stopped telling lies? He's working. So we have to, we're not working for salvation, but we're working for the gospel of Yahshua. Because salvation is a gift. So we have to come to, he cannot be there telling lies and we are there putting down the tools. I said, no man, we are okay. <laughs> <laughs> You have a lot to do. Look at how many churches out there. How many souls? How does sheep of I that are not of this fold? Them also I must bring. So it is our duty to go out there in the, all the world and preach the gospel. And he said, you should not be ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. That's right. And what is it? We're going to read it after those two scriptures. First Corinthians is the next scripture. Finish up the word there. Warning every man. So we are warning you. Know your job. Because when you go to your physical job, you know your duty. Warning every man. And teaching every man and that's in why all teach wisdom. You in all wisdom. Read. That we may present every man perfect in Yahshua the Messiah. So that's the aim, that's spirit law. Perfect in you. 
Read on. Whereunto I also labor, striving, striving according to his working, yes. which worketh in me mightily. Worketh in us mightily. That's the words of eternal life, Yahshua in us. All right, read on, Doc. That's the end of that. Um, first Timothy. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Stop. If I say to you, what is the gospel? Can you repeat it in your mind? Mm -hmm. Well, if you didn't know, you're going to get it now. That's why this is a school. Mm -hmm. And I'd ask for that scripture where it says, without controversy, great is the mystery of holiness. He who was manifested in the flesh, Yahweh, who was man, that's the unity of the spirit. Spirit law manifesting. He who, who was manifested, so these two scriptures working together. He was seen of angels. Find it for me, but finish 1 Corinthians 15. Finish it. Moreover, brethren, yes. I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. So we are declaring and preaching the gospel of Yahshua. As the previous speaker the other day put on the word, the, the word, the word declare. Read. Which also you received. Hopefully you receive it and believe it. And wherein ye stand. And hopefully we are all standing in the gospel. As soldiers for Yahshua. Read. By which also ye are saved. So if you sit we are saved by it, we need to tell others that this is what you are saved by. Because without the shedding of Yahshua's blood, there is no remission of sins. And they have to know that too. Because poor thing, they believe that it's by baptism that they are saved. And that's a big deception. Yes. By which also you are saved. So we have to go and tell the world this. Read. If ye keep in memory what I have preached unto you. What was preached? Read. Unless ye have believed in vain. Unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all. Yes. That which I also received. That which I also received. How that Yahshua died for our sins. How? In what state? In what condition? The reason. Why did he die? You think it's a joke? Why did he die for our sins? And it is showed where? According to what? According to the scriptures. Oh yes? You sure you see the word scriptures there? Mm -hmm. yes. According to the scriptures. <laughs> so you have to go in there and show how he died. And how he was buried. Mm -hmm. And how he rose again the third day according to the scriptures mm -hmm. and the scriptures if you notice the gospel principle is on all the chart first step in the pattern is death how did the priest get to the most holy place there must be a death a burial and a resurrection then he, 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 he would walk 40 feet in this holy place once per year he ascends to the most holy place put in blood on the four arms of the altar blood wash the sacrifice in the upper portion of the labor blood water and the holy arm he was anointed or quickened with that all the honor of anointed oil spirit. 40. How you came in this world? You were in your father's line in a death like state. That seed couldn't grow until there's conception. So that's a death. You are buried in, the, in, the, in your mother's womb. That's a death and a burial. Three trimesters. The first three months, the second three months, the third trimester. There's a show of blood and water, and you take seeing the breath of life, and you cry. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right Lord God and he says let everything that heart bread praise Yahweh then you start to breathe <sighs> you want more with this stand up <laughs> and there is blood water spirit in that child <laughs> read on and that he was buried yes and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures so he rose again the third day according to the scriptures the first day of creation everything is in a chaotic state a death do you want to read that from your bible mm -hmm. i didn't know it was testifying to yashua until i came down in the gate of yashua the second day there's a burial testifying to the burial of yashua the messiah the third day, the seed of vegetation sprang forth, testifying to the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. The fourth day, the sun was placed in the sky, testifying that the fourth dispensation, he would tarry fourth day, four day, for 40 days. Then he ascends to his father. The fifth day, he poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. The sixth, he formed the man. The dispensation, did you know about this before you came in here? No. Adam, 
Adam died in his conscience. That's death. Noah's flood came. There's a burial. Then he spoke to Abraham about the seed. This seed is testifying to the third day where you have the seed. Are you going to get the trees without the seed? Did you know that the third step in the holy place in the court roundabout is that holy iron of anointed oil? Where you get oil from? Huh? Trees. So you see the third here with the, with the oil and the seed? The third is a panoramic vision. When it's a panoramic, you can see it from all angles. So if you can appreciate it one way, Yahweh show you another way. Right. And the fourth dispensation, that's why Daniel says that he was cut off in the midst of the week of dispensation. One week of dispensation, one day with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years has one day. You ever hear about that? Mm -hmm. Prophetic timing. Yahweh ordering the affairs of mankind. Then he died, buried, and resurrected. the poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit and the day of Pentecost in our hearts and mind. Who are bound under that law? They are like the, the, the fishes in the sea. And the, the birds are those who receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The sixth day he formed the physical man. The sixth dispensation is forming the spiritual man. Then there is the, is, is the kingdom of heaven. All right. Are you holding anything? First Timothy. All right, read that for me, please. First Timothy 3.16. Yes. And without controversy. Without controversy. Great. Great. In, in Malachi 1.14, Yahweh says, I am a great king. <laughs> Yahshua the Messiah being the only king and potentate of Yahweh. We are a crown of glory and garments of life. Yahshua the Messiah is king of all kings. <laughs> A king cannot be a lord. He reigned forever. That's why there's no successor to his throne. Great is the mystery of holiness. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh. Just the unity of the spirit. Spirit law. Justified Nine in the spirit. Nine divine principle attributes. Imbued in that body. The fullness of the supernal nature of Yahweh in bodily form. Holy and great is he, King Yahshua. We salute our king. He's worthy to be praised. That's why you say, Hallelujah. Praise be to Yahweh and his son Yahshua. All right, finish up. Justified in the spirit. He's justified in the spirit. John the 17th chapter, I was praying. He spoke about the unity of the spirit. Yahweh sent an angel. Luke, the physician, pick it up in, 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 in Luke because he had to fulfill every yacht and every tittle. Let me look 24, 44, and his sweat became as blood. He, he is our peace. He's our atonement. He's that peace offering. The other reader, Bell has gone. Get me first Peter 1. Seen. Read on that. Seen of angels. Seen of angels. So he has his witnesses. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. He preached the death, burial, and the resurrection, ascension, blood, water, spirit, 40, in the name of Yahshua. Believed on in he the world. He preached unto the Gentiles. He was believed on in the world. Received up into glory. And John, the revelator, said, listen, you know, he saw an angel in Revelation 14, verse 6, flying in the midst of heaven with the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth. So he came down by the gospel. Matthew 26, 27, 50, he died. 57, he was buried in Joseph of Armatia, and you too. 28, 5 and 6, he says, he is not here, he is risen, because come see the place where Yahshua laid. He tarries up on the earth pen for 40 days. At the end of 40 days, he ascended to his father on the day of Pentecost, he opened up the kingdom of heaven in their heart. Acts 1 and 9, they said they saw him going up. How? He went up by, by the gospel. How did you get to ascension? Death, burial, resurrection, ascension. You see that the gospel is seals and it is the key. And that's why it seals you with the Holy Spirit, Ephesians 1, 13. So it pierced his side out came blood and water. The blood is for the remission of sin. The water is for the washing of regeneration. And the spirit is for the resurrection. And the fourth is for the ascension where he takes you up to his father. And he is our peace. Colossians 1, 14 after this. I'm coming down. But I ask for a scripture. Please read that in 1 Peter 1, 1, 10. 1 Peter 1 and 10. Yes. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. You see how blessed we are? The prophets wondering, what is this about? 
What is this death burial? In this latter time, he has revealed it to us. What is this death burial resurrection about? The prophet, in, they wanted to inquire in it. Read on. The prophets have inquired and searched diligently. And searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And they were looking for the grace. But no, 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 it's not time. God grace is Yeshua. He is our faith. He is our peace offering. So all the offerings that was back here, Yeshua fulfilled them and brought them to the reality. He is that peace. We have peace through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin. Mm-hmm. Without the shedding of Yahshua's blood, there is no remission for sin. That's why the book says he, um, he brought peace to his blood. He is that peace offering. Read. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of the Messiah, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand mm-hmm. the sufferings of the Messiah Listen. and the glory that should follow. Look from all the way back there. The sufferings of the Messiah and the glory that should follow okay that for time read please that, that's enough thank you colossians 1 14 yes in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin what in whom we have redemption through the blood of yashua the messiah even the forgiveness of sin we were told in the church world that is water wash away sin and i know all of you who were in the church world you were told that Mm-hmm. And you see that there is a change of heart. And that's the spirit law written now in our heart. That's why Colossians says, second chapter says, no, no, um, known and read of all men. And it's by Psalm 45 verse 1 he says, um, he's speaking that his tongue is the pen of a ready writer. And he's writing the spirit law in our heart. And that was done on the day of Pentecost. And we are no longer dead under this work, old covenant of dead causing work. No, we are alive by the preaching of the gospel. So that's why the spirit law came in us on the day of Pentecost. Read on, finish up. You know, Who you're... is the image of the invisible L? Who is the image of the invisible L? The first cause of all creation. He said the first cause of all creation. For by him were all things created. He said by him were all things created. That are in heaven. That are in, don't miss that, you know, that are in heaven. That are in earth. And that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones. Whether they be thrones. Or dominions. Or dominion. Or principalities. Or principalities. Or powers. Or powers. All things were created by him All and for him. All things were created by him and for him. All right, Doc, for time. Read, read the other reader, please. All right. So in 1 Corinthians 12, I'll just quote this. It says, if it says, if, if we preach that Yahshua is not risen, our preaching is vain. Because Yahweh raised up Yahshua from the dead. So he's, he has written that spirit law now in us. Who are not after the flesh anymore. And you notice what the scripture, but after the spirit. You notice what the scripture lesson says in verse 2? Verse 2 of the scripture lesson, and I'll sit. Just verse Romans two. 8 and 2. Yes. For the law of the spirit of life. For the law of the spirit of life. In Yahshua the Messiah. Because this world didn't have any spirit back there to give them life. That's why he gave them a new heart on the day of Pentecost. Resuscitated that heart. Brought it to life. The law of the spirit of life. Where is it? In Yahshua the Messiah. Read. And made me free from the law of sin and death. So we are free from that through the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. All praises go to Yahweh Elim and his son Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Our next speaker for this morning's lecture will be Dr. Ben Brown of the Quincy Branch. Good morning. 
I am so grateful to be here. And I must say, at this point, from a personal standpoint, I feel like being, I'm in intensive care. And, you know, you have the IVs, you have the respiratory, all that going on, hooked up to your blood pressure, and you have doctors to see about you, and nurses, and we're ministers. And I thank you for all that has been spoken and said this weekend, because it's been good to me and for me, because I need it. I'm still growing, I'm still learning, and I thank the Father for allowing me to be here. Thank you for your smiles, your hellos, your good mornings, your good nights. And I'm glad that I am able to be, I feel resuscitated, sustained, because there's still much going on with me. I may not be where you are, but I'm in the right place. I'm here. So I ask you to be patient with me, and I'm, I'm humbled by the things that I've heard, things that I, that I knew that I even know better now. And I'm excited about the same stuff that I already had, because it's greater than what I even knew. And I, I, I'm just happy to be here. The previous speaker was dealing with, um, first starting off with the name. And it has already been said about the process that's taking place. And it is a process, and, and, and we have to, we, we, can't oper we can't do the process. We're here to be a part of it. Yahshua is doing the operation. And I thank the Father for that, but you gotta be here and to be chosen to be a part of for him to give you a new heart, to give you a new spirit, to wash, to cleanse, to chastise, and I thank him for this opportunity. And we were told that, that you have the same thing on these charts because the pattern, the manifestation may change, the principle remains the same. And one of the things I like to show you is, is that when we look with the name and the tetragrammaton, you have YHWH. This is the foundation for the name of Yahweh, and it has four letters. When we come over here to the pattern, you see that this pattern is in the, with the altar, the first vessel you come to, it has four horns on it. And we said that this altar also represents foundation which in the physical body is represented by the digestive system. And you have four sigmoid colons, ascending, descending, transverse, and sigmoid, okay? And those four points of blood appear here. You have four points of blood appear here. And down here, the way that the Father had the name chart done, here's the tetragrammaton beneath down here at the bottom as a support, a foundation. One, two, three, four. The next thing, you move up and you come to Yahshua. When you come to this altar, what was this altar used for? It was used to offer up sacrifices. And right here, if you can see, there's a little lamb laying here. So here it is that Yahweh gave his only begotten son that we might have the hope of eternal life. And he prepared a special prepared body that Yahweh himself would move from his pure spirit state in part into shape and form, which was later manifested in a physical body known as Yahshua Messiah. And when we read how that when Miriam was told that that holy thing that she was going to bring forth, that was going to be the body that Yahweh prepared for himself to get in. Why would it have to be a holy thing? Because he said he doesn't dwell in any what? Unclean place. And that that body also was a type and shadow of the land lamb that was uh, slain before the foundation of the world, the lamb to do what? Take away the sins of the world. And just the way that he organized it is so beautiful and simple that he would have a special prepared body because that body was going to be offered up because that's what was done with the sacrifices. So when we move here, we know that Yahshua, the Holy Spirit, wasn't offered up, but he had a special prepared body that he got in that that body would be what? Offered up. And it could have to be without sin. That's why it was called a holy thing, because it was going to take your and my sins, what? Upon it. And that is so beautiful. And then we see how that when we move to Elohim, Yahweh, you see, coming just like it is here, 
Elohim, without a discernible shape and form, the Father took on what? Shape and form. And we look at this shape and form, and we've often used water to demonstrate the three states of Yahweh. Yahweh in his pure spirit state, like it unto the gaseous state of the vapor, then taking on a shape and form, H2O here, H2O here, we get the water droplets, and then we say the solid manifestation will be as what? As the ice. But Yahweh Elohim Yahshua in this state, in this state, and in this what? State. So we pick up the principle in the pattern of what? Water. That's line upon line and precept upon precept. So we see here we're dealing with, if you're just using the name on this chart, this is as Yahshua, this is as Elohim, Yahweh. And we're going blood, water, spirit. So here it is, you have the principle of water here. Didn't he say that we would be washed in the water by the what? By the word, our son. So it's following what? The pattern. And then you move on up to Yahweh. And you, you pick up the tetragrammaton again. You move into the holy place. You come to an altar, what? Incense. And it has those four ingredients on the altar of what? Incense. And they waffle up, we say, unto the nostrils of Yahweh. And as was already said, how that out in the wilderness, you see, you pick up that burning bush. When Moses was out here at the burning bush and you pick up the name was there and we say how many ingredients is in the air that we breathe four ingredients. So we're picking up the father again there showing how that we're following the self same thing. Here's that foundation. The sacrifice that was offered up, you see, Elohim like the labor and moving on up to spirit representing the father. And again, we go blood water spirit and we can see that here we stretch out the blood water spirit to use the whole pattern this would be as blood water and spirit all back unto Yahweh and those are just some of the things just sitting here in my seat I thank the father for allowing me to to see even more of how that when Yahweh took on shape and form and was manifested in that physical body that came down, we said that's a what? A descension. So when we look over here, we see accepting this was a what? Descension. Accepting this is a what? Ascension. And it's all over here. You see, this is a what? Descension. This is a ascension. And we see that manifested. He came into a physical body and walked around the earth plane. It's got to be a round trip. That body was used for a reason, but Yahweh is what? Spirit. He's not physical, but he came into the earth plane, you see, to do a job, to do a work, to redeem us, to redeem us from what? From under death. And Adam all died. It said in Yahshua, all shall be what? Made alive. So here it is, there was a death that what? Took place. There was a coming down, and through Yahshua there is a what? Going up, or a descension, and a what? Ascension that takes place. And what happened was, is that we see that if there was a death that took place, we ask ourselves, what was the death? Because the theme is talking about life. The law of the spirit of what? Of life. Why is that so important? Because there was a what? Death. And in Adam all died. So we want to know where am I going to get my life back from? And that's going to be in Yahshua. When Adam and Eve died, there was a death that took place. We said that the physical man did not fall over dead. We said that he died where? In his conscience, in the soul, his heart, mind. And that's where we need to be what? Picked up again. And somebody has already said and it's been said and we were picked up on the what day of Pentecost because when we have that coming down what happened to the man can I get a minute Seth I'm sorry Dr. Williams all right he said Yahweh brought forth the man Adam step out here for us see right there thank you and he said he did what so Yahweh breathed in the man he got in the man and he breathed in the man the man couldn't do it on his own so there, there is a inner man, and there's the what? There's the outer man. See? And if Yahweh stepped in the man and gave him life, when Yahweh steps out of the man, then he's dead. <laughs> All right? 
So we're looking at, well, what happened to Adam and Eve? What did they lose that they did not hold your head up? They did not die physically. <laughs> they did not die physically because we're looking at the spirit of Yahweh is what causes everything to live, move, and have this what? Being. But they did lose their what? Inner life for the soul. They lost their spiritual life. And Yahshua is the one that has to give that back to that part of you that's in there, that inner man. So here it is. Look, let's put it like this. Yahweh is still in there. You can go on back to your seat. <laughs> All right? That's how he's able to operate by universal spirit law still. And the whole creation was operating by universal spirit law. But it, we need the Holy Spirit for eternal life. And that's what we're so thankful for because you walk around here and the world out here is operating by universal spirit law whether they want to or not. But Yahweh has chosen us to come in here that we might have what? Eternal life. And this is through Yahshua, the only what? Hope of glory. So Yahshua is the life what? Unto the soul. And on the day of Pentecost, it was what? Pour it back out. Because Adam and Eve was alive what? In this garden, both physically and spiritually. And that was just, that's, that's just so Makes me so thankful to, 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 to have this opportunity because that's what it's all about. Because people out here in the world are worshiping everything now. Turning to any and everything except for the Father, you see. So there is a coming down and there is a going back up. And the way that the Father manifested himself in that physical body and came down the earth plane, it says he was sown a natural body, but he resurrected what? A quickening spirit. Because he didn't come to stay in that body, what? Forever. And we said some 33 and a half years. I counted the pins out there in the map, and it says there's like 33 schools here. I'm like, that is awesome, you see? And, he, he, and we didn't come here to stay. You got to go back home. So when Yahshua came, you see the father in this body Look, he's going to leave that body behind. It was consumed. But the Holy Spirit must go back what? Unto the Father, back unto that pure spirit state. So that is also manifested if time allows in the digestive system. If you would get our textbook, volume 3, page 17. And when you look at the way that food enters into the body, it doesn't enter from beneath, it enters from above. So when the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world, you see, that was the true lamb. And then he came, what, on down. And it's got to be a round trip and go on back up. So let's take our little journey to the supermarket. Some of us need a cart and a list. Some of us just need a basket. Some of us just need our minds, and we can go in there. See, I'm still coming to class with my book bag, my notebook, and my Bible, and my pen. I need the whole car, all right? You might just have a basket, your little, whatever you grab, and then some of you can just use your mind. You go through there, you don't even need a list. You know what you're going to pick up. And one of the things that we start out with, with uh, dealing with food, and that is, do you, believe it or not, you start with your digestive system right up here in your head region because what you're going to use is your senses. You're going to use sight, you're going to use smell, you're going to use taste, touch, and hearing. So well, how is that? When you go in the grocery store, you start picking up stuff, right? Shaking it, sometimes it, mm -mm. Then you poking it, so that ain't right. Some people smell everything, you see? Then some people in there getting fired because they're tasting the grapes that work in there because they're tasting them, all right? <laughs> all right? And you're using all of your Romans 1, 19 and 20 with natural food, all right? With natural food, you're using your Romans 1, 19 and 20 because you don't want to just get and eat no any old thing. See, it's not that that goeth in the body that defile the man. What man are we talking about? That's the inner man. Because you go out here and eat anything if you want to, and your natural man gonna pay for it. You're gonna be up chucking puking and you'll be in the hospital. All right? But that that goeth in the man, you got people out here worshiping a dietary law, thinking that's gonna give them eternal life. 
That's what I'm talking about. You can't eat pork. I got a Muslim friend. Yo, I can't eat that pork. I'm, anyway. Uh, and all kind of stuff, you see. But what we're talking about is how the ear tries what? The words as the teeth try the meat. Something natural to point to the spirit. So you start up here in your most holy place using your common sense when you go into that grocery store to get something and you start to shop. And then now what they're saying, because we were talking about food since day one. And this came for me is because I was diagnosed with diverticulitis, root word divert. You know, we go check out everything. I got an illness. What y'all we going to show me? We something else, you right? What's the <laughs> cancer? What is it? And people don't understand that. And when you have diverticulitis, that means that you got these little pockets in your colon area. They're where the food trying to get over there and stay. And those folders stay because that solid need to do what? Pass on through. Only the substance need to stay. All right. So here it is. You go through the grocery store and they said shop the outer portions and not go up in the middle because everything prepackaged. What happened when you get prepackaged food? A script to go by. When you turn on your news and listen to the religious story, they mostly got a script, right? Well, my script has got to be up here. All right. Because right now. It might not look like it. I'm nervous. I don't know what. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm relying on the Father to bring it what back to my remembrance. So here you go shopping around the store and they say, get produce. Get produce. We want the old school, y'all, don't we? We want produce. Don't give me this package stuff that you done added all this extra sodium to, MSG to, Plastic too, um, styrofoam too. I don't want your prepackaged food. And go get something that grew on a tree, that animal was slaughtered. See, when it comes to this gospel, give it to us unadulterated. We don't want it prepackaged and all neat and sent out. All right, you got to come to us. You're going to have to open up, preach it to us. Some cooking got to go down. All right, so then you go around the store, and that's what you start using this right here that Yahweh gave us, Romans 1, 19 and 20, to start checking it out. But as you're young, what do we like? Snack, snap, crackle, pop, right? Ginger snaps. <laughs> snap. <laughs> what? Crackle, cracker jacks. Pop, soda pop. And then when you get older, what do we do? We appreciate the broccoli, the spinach. Ugh, now I love it. You see what I'm saying? Been sitting around in this class a long time, people. I appreciate blood, water, spirit, 40. Some of the young folks, they say, well, I'm tired of going down there and they leave class. I appreciate blood, water, spirit, 40. Death, burial, resurrection. That's solid food. That's that produce. All right? And it's like, it ain't fancy. Yes, it is. You just got to know how to work with it. That's broccoli I had you eating it. <laughs> See, I can work in the kitchen. You'll be eating something like uh, Dennis was eating some uh, catfish, broccoli, and some cream or something. And he said, what is this? He don't eat fish. It was too late. He was tearing <laughs> He was tearing it up, right? <laughs> he was tearing it up. So he'll, we come to this class and we say, you are what? What you eat. Now somebody was talking about we eat all this bad stuff, put it in our body, and what happens? You eat all this bad stuff, the words, what you're hearing, put it in your inner man, and you in what? You in bad shape, all right? The root word of diet is die. We want life. Just put it up here, somebody said, so what are you talking about, so they can see. This is how we deal with words. Put the T way over there. There's diet, right? There's diet. You need to watch what you eat so you don't die. And the Father's manifesting that more so down here in the natural, as well as what? It's pointing to the spirit. Because they're pack packaging up anything and uh, putting so much sugar out here. You know, sweet Jesus, we, a lot of sugar ain't good for you, right? <laughs> And the smoothies you thought were real good and you found out they was full of sugar because them smooth things are full of sugar. All right. So the father just showing us through food about his purpose because food is so vital to our existence. It's going to tell us in the Elohim book that it deals with the very foundation and the purpose of Yahweh is manifested through the digestive system. And doctors will get on your case telling you about your diet, what you eat for your health. And they start us out as babes right there talking about the four main what things in the food group. 
you got to have your meats, <laughs> your meats, your vegetables, your grains, and your dairy. All right, so now that's balance. See, Yahweh is balanced. This right here, this ain't a balanced meal. All right, it don't fit on the plate right. This fits on the plate right. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. And we say on these what? These plates that we have up here, that Yahweh is serving us him. Nothing else. It's to honor and glorify him. No junk food. Nothing added. It's all purely what? About him and he's serving us him. All right. But the devil's job is to do what? To distract us. To offer us the other stuff that what? That we don't need. So when you look at our diet and what we're eating. Now here comes the next process. You got that food? Then what would we start to do? You got to start to chew it. It's got to start to be broken down. You start to chew, and then what happens? The saliva has to mix with it. All right? Then we had a young man in, in, in class when he was like this. He just wanted to hold his food in his mouth. Right, Sherelle? And that was Sherelle's son. And he would just chew and hold the food in his mouth like, Junior, swallow your food. And he would ride with us for what? When we came to the house, Wanda, he said, what's going to go with it? He just held this voice. He said, ah! And he finally let out this scream that was just piercing. But he didn't want to swallow his food. You'll have people come to class with you, and they say, mm -hmm, it was all right. Said, but they don't want to swallow it. They just don't want to what? They don't want to swallow it. They'll chew on it for a while, and they don't want to swallow it. What the Father shows us in here for many of us, it took us a while, but what? It's got to come down. It's part of Yahweh's purpose. In order for you to be sustained from a natural standpoint, that descension and ascension is going on every day, even with the heartbeat. Every minute, every second. That food comes, and now it starts to journey. Our understanding in this school of process it starts a journey and he does the operation once you've done that part with the food what are you looking at after that you following it and tracing what happened to it in your body if somebody open their mouth at the table and you go oh, close your mouth you don't want to see that but a minute ago it was on their plate he's like give me a piece but once the operation starts you see, and that chewing and stuff, you swallow. You're not tracing that food. You don't know what's going on. Yahweh told us, come to class. Be regular in your attendance. Learn all you can learn. You're going to need. But he's doing the work. He's doing the work. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. One, that's the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He's doing the job. And he's taking just like that food in you. You don't, you got to go to the doctor to tell you what's going on like I did. Why ain't, why it ain't happening now? I don't know what's going on there. Where did I deal with? I suppose, do I eat? All right. And so the food is going down in there and there. Operation Joshua was doing this in our hearts and mind. That's why he said, I'm going to wash you. I'm going to cleanse you. I got you. It's an inside what? Job, not an outside job. That food comes on down. and We ain't going through the whole track of the migratory track uh, with the food coming down. But what does it have to do? It passes through stages. Just like my understanding, I don't know about yours, it has passed through stages. And it's, and it's like, Yah is not through me yet because it's got to be a separation between the solid product and the substance that was in that food. He's separating between the what? The natural and the spirit. And that food goes down through and it has to wait some time. Then a gate opens and said, move forward. Who is doing all this? Yah will have you sit in class and he'll say, wait some time. Can you wait? I'll take you to the next level. I ain't through working with this part yet. And then he'll push you on through. Parastatic ways. Y'all have to go in the other one. And you see dual denim, the opening of the gate. And what he's doing in the process is getting what he want out of it. Just like this whole creation came for, and what is he doing? He's absorbing, he's getting it back unto himself. He getting what he want out of it, and what? The solid part, that's going to be what? Consumed, destroyed. It's got to go. And that food coming down through there, and guess what it has to deal with? It has to deal with the blood. It has to deal with the water. And the spirit of Yahweh that's got everything in operation. And there's invisible substance like the spirit part in it that Yahweh is extracting back unto himself out of you and I. 
That's what the body is doing with that solid substance. It's just a carrier. Your body is just a carrier. There's an inner man in there. And he don't want the outer man. He wants that inner man. And when that food comes down there, you see, it has to deal with a regulation system. The pancreas. The liver. That's Yahshua, people. He regulates. You know how you can get so smart sometimes in class from a natural standpoint, a lot of knowledge and be a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal because you don't have the love regulator? That's Yahshua. He's the liver. See, the pancreas has got to balance them sugars and them, the glucose and the stuff that's taken from the food. We don't want to be exhausted upon measure. That's why Yahweh have to give you a thorn in the side. Keep you in place, except you be exhausted, what? Uh, exalted uh, 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 too high in the natural, you see? And, and it just, it's humbling me. And I'm glad about that because Yahweh give you a thorn to show you ain't nothing without me. I ain't forgot that, dog. I ain't forgot that. But I'm, you know, I'm going to do what you tell me to do, but I ain't forgot that. I ain't, a, I ain't run off and left because I can't. He keeps reminding me, I got you. All right? When that food come on down in here, and that substance, it goes through an acid treatment. This class, people, this is the journey. It's a gnashing that goes on. It's a churning that goes on. Down in the belly, it can get noisy, right? Your life can get noisy sometimes. I mean right up in your head, it gets noisy sometimes. But from a natural standpoint, you see in the stomach, can't you hear it sometimes? Ooh, you, I, I got some crackers, but that stomach start growling, right? But do you know what's going on in a person's heart and mind? Do you know what they're thinking sitting right up here beside you? It's a silent work going on up here, right? We talked about belly above already a speaker hit it, what? And a belly beneath. Now this one down here like outwardly. Outwardly we can show and manifest and pretend all kind of stuff. Can't we? That's that belly beneath. But that belly above, Yahweh is sitting up. That's part of your brain called the arterial circle of Willis. Seven main arteries that come together to make that stick figure of a man representing him sitting up in your what? Heart and mind seeing all things. The eye of Yahweh is in all places beholding what? Your good and your evil that matters to him. What's going on right in your heart and mind? Your very thoughts. You see? And that's why he's going to bring into what? Captivity. Those very thoughts and work with them. But you outwardly, you know, you, we can put on a show. All right? But Yahweh sitting up in there. I like that. And you know what? It was a silent work with the building of that temple that the speaker worked with. Guess what? These are called your temples. And Yahweh got a silent work. He up there doing the work. But sometimes be loud to you. you just, somebody said, what's wrong with you? You just want to go running. And they were like, what's wrong with them? Because Yahweh thundering up there. We can't hear it. You see, but you hear the voice. Hear the voice from heaven. Do what? Listen as he speaks. You see, just like your stomachs get to talking to you and you listen to this. I got to get some because it's about to embarrass me. Right. So here it is. The father, he know how to get a hold to you. He said, look at here. I'm sorry. I just got to go. I got to do this. Why? Because you feel like the father fitting about what embarrass you. When he come down with that chastisement, you don't see a parent whoop a child right in the middle. You'd be like, ooh. You know what I'm saying? And after a while, what happened? You say, I don't want that no more. I don't want that to happen no more, especially not in front of my friends. You ask them in the past, they don't care if they're over. Your friends might get it too. You understand? And you're like, I know I'm going to get away with this. My friend's over here. And here comes, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Right? <laughs> yeah, let's work this food a little bit more. And it's passing down through here. Now, there's a thing called constipation. And they say that means you're not getting enough fiber. You're not getting enough of that water. And what's happening is the solids is just hanging around. They're hanging around. To be carnally minded is what? Is death. To be spiritually minded in life. We don't want to just come in here forever learning and never get a true understanding and just holding on to the natural. Holding on to the natural. Got natural knowledge but without an understanding. That's constipation. See, <laughs> this guy, that solid part has got to pass. Then we don't want to come in here and it come in one ear and what? Right out the other. What's that called? That's diarrhea. <laughs> All right? <laughs> we don't want that either. We want the food to follow the what? The process. Process. Take your time. Do them three hours. How you supposed to do it? Okay, it's time now. I want that. So every class, that's how we feel. That it's a it's a beautiful witness, people. And then what happens is is that through those arterial walls, that blood starts to ex extract it, pull it 
I tell you, get all this. Now, how much time I got? Woo! All the, all the, uh, <laughs> the blood starts to pull all those nutrients and the substance out of that food. And check this out. In the pancreas, we got to regulate it now. You know, it said, that's enough, that's enough, that's enough, let's shut it down for the night. How many times have we heard that? You see, that's enough, that's enough, cheering y'all go home. Why? Because you get so high, that blood sugar can get too high. Then it be so low. Say, so what's wrong with you, man? What's wrong, with you, bro? Come on. And then what that Yahshua have to do? He have to regulate that thing. That's what the pancreas is in there doing, making sure you get your blood level just right. You don't want to be too high. You don't want to be too low. You see, and the diet affects the what? Pancreas and the liver, what it has to do, and so forth. So here goes the extraction and the blood. Let's bring in the circulatory system. That's my love. The circulatory system represents the love. Here comes the love of the Father. We down here in the natural, this big schoolmaster, the whole world, the creation is a teacher, it's a classroom. It's Yahweh's Roman 119 and 20, he got us in it. And we just to learn and learn and obtain and gather, and it's just, you know what I'm saying? And if the circulatory system don't pick up them nutrients out of that food and take it throughout the body to sustain it, you sitting there with a big bloated stomach. And you know people have a problem with that. Yahweh got it manifested out here. There's a condition, Dr. Fleming, can you yell it out for me? Where they don't want to take the nutrients from the food. The body doesn't want to, to, to process properly what they eat. It doesn't do the proper extraction from it. Somebody know when, uh, what's the other one? Y'all heard that, I can't say it. We'll ask her after class for time's sake. So we don't want to come sit in class and just hear all this and say, I never get an understanding. I, I never get an understanding. Listen, it's Joshua said, then open he their what? Their understanding that they might understand what those scriptures. Because they're walking along the road to a man sad in their heart. They go to pancreas. Okay, trying to get that blood sugar back up. You see, what manner of conversation are you having one with another? Seeing that you, that's Joshua speak to you right in your heart and mind sometime and turn that bad day into joy. You know, you're going to come to class and they say, no, no more about it. I'm going to be obedient. I'm coming to class. Do I supposed to do? I get up. I'm getting up out of here. And then for it, oh, he got you smiling, laughing, talking to everybody. You've been calling me. All that just regulated that thing right. You understand? So here comes the blood. The blood coming to get it. Yahshua coming to get his love. That's what he's looking for. You see, he coming to get it. You see, and what he going to do is, he going to take it, that blood he, that blood going to take those nutrients and take them throughout the body to do what? To renew it again from death back unto what? Back unto life. You see, and he knows that blood doesn't discriminate. It's going to go to the, the bad part, the sick part, all of that, and give it the substance. Give us, Father, our daily bread. For your fathers did eat bread in the wilderness, and they did what? They perished. But Yahshua is that bread that came down from heaven. You see? He's that living what? Water. Father, give me my daily bread of your divine attributes. Dr. Kelly, what did the Father say? He said, make a distinction between your attributes and his attributes. Between divine wisdom and your wisdom. So we want of his substance that we be bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, from a spiritual standpoint point inwardly. Why? Because you are what you eat. So the circulatory system, the love of Yahshua has got to deal with all this that he's taught us and take it, that, take it throughout your heart and mind. Renewing your inner man. You see, that's why now to him that's able to keep us from falling mm -hmm. and to present our soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Read the Elohim book, page, volume 3, page 17, that uh, second paragraph, the first paragraph really. This is Elohim, um, the archetype original pa pattern, mm -hmm. volume 3, page 716. Page 717. Sorry. The last triad to be discussed is this triad of foundation, power, and strength, which is represented by the digestive system, muscular system, and skeletal system, respect respectively, in our bodies. The digestive system concerns itself with the consummation of foodstuff and the extraction of the essence. There go that worm. Eat. Come to class. Eat, 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 eat. And then at that point in time, that chrysalis, he starts that transformation right on the inside. Go ahead. And the extraction of the essence of the same. Fatty acids, carbohydrates, proteins, minerals, etc. 
See, those are the, that's the essence, people, of what you're eating. We say the way that food goes in is not the way it what? It comes back up. It was sown a natural body, it resurrected what? A quickening spirit. We're in the natural, but flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. So we can't go back like this. These are not the bodies that shall be. Read. And their conversion into living cells and tissues to build up the body with the non-convertible portion of foodstuff being eliminated from the body as waste matter. It said there's a non-convertible part. It's just got to be eliminated. You see, you hold on to this natural. You can't take it with you. Get the substance out of it, and it's got to be eliminated. And you always say, shortly, he's going to do that. So while we're passing through here, we'll be getting everything we can because the hurricane coming. You be all the water gone. They got all the bread off the aisle. Everything because you better put something in your house because the hurricane coming. The storm coming. Better get them candles. Better get your batteries. Get everything ready. Read. This operation of the digestive system is the foundation or the overall purpose mm -hmm. of the functioning body. Likewise, the purpose of Yahweh works the same way, mm -hmm. for it is a downward phase. Coming all, down and a going up. Read. All concluded under sin by the Edemic transgression. The extraction of the essential part of man, the soul, by the putting off of the sins of the fleshly body. That's what all this is pointing to. I'm sorry, that's what all this point to. Yahweh is extracting. Mm -hmm. He's put us in this big digestive system that he got going on, but he's extracting. That's why there's the gnashing, the gashing, the moving in your life. The look like I'm at a standstill in life. Didn't move forward the good times, the bad times, but all the time bringing us closer to him. Read. By the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah yes. and the converting of the soul into an essential part of the body of Elohim. As the fatty acids, carbohydrates, and proteins are the building stones of our physical bodies, so are the souls of men, the lively stones of the temple of Yahweh, right. which is the body of Elohim. That's good, right there for my time set. Listen, Yahweh is getting us ready, just like the stomach down there taking us stuff, and then love come and get it, and take all the nutrients to help build the body. We want to be a part of that temple. He's the head. He getting you right to extract you to be a part of that new body. His body. That temple. And it's a silent work that's going on. And he's just gathering. He's just gathering. He's just gathering. And we just thank the Father for allowing us to be. I thank him for allowing me to, to, to hear, to know, to bring me in. And I'm kept by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I would not keep myself. I don't deserve to be here. I thank the Father for his mercy. You see? And if it was up to some of us, you know how we would do it. But we glad that the Father don't do it like that. That's right. You see? Because, you know, we, we'll fill up the garbage can quick and kick you right on out the door. You understand? But the Father said, then will I wash you and I'll cleanse you and a new heart. See, all, I know all he, all he have to do is just speak the word. You looking at somebody, he speak the word on them, and then you still left in that state of wonder. What, wonder what? You better examine your own self. See, because self, when I eat today, and looking at you, and you hungry, and I'm just eating, they doing you no good. <laughs> no good. You got to eat it for yourself. You got to have it in you for yourself to sustain your body, to be able to give you revitalization for life. So Yahshua, the spirit of life for my soul, you see, for your soul. And that's why we say to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the what? New earth state. Without Yahshua, there is no life until what? And we sing this, there is no life without Yahshua. You see, to give life to your man. And I love and thank the Father for allowing me to know the things that I know because if I didn't, I probably would go drive off of a cliff. Mm -hmm. You understand? I, you see people in a situation, you're like, I don't understand that. I do. And if you don't understand it, be grateful. Yeah. 
You don't want to be taken there because some things you can only understand by what? Experience. And now, you know, people want to try drugs the first time they did, you know, and it's like some things you just don't need to even experience. Right. See, I'll take the witness. Right. I'll, yeah. I'll accept the report yeah. on that. Yeah. I'll, 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 ha I'll handle that really well. Yeah. Dealing with taste, my, my, my aunt was 97. She just passed on us down in Winter Haven. She had this tree out there they call a bittersweet. I said, well, that's a beautiful orange. She said, man, them things is bitter, boy. Don't go get it. I said, I just got to tell you. She said, you go right ahead then. <laughs> boy, it was so pretty. I cut it. That thing was so sour and nasty. You understand? But I had to prove it, what, to myself. But I would have been better off because next person knew I told them, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. So thank you, Father, for allowing me to come into this class to understand that there is no flesh that's going to glory in your sight, people. And we, I'm going to end with this, we are not just talking about this physical body. See, we're talking about the works of the flesh over there in Galatians, the fifth chapter. See, that's the inner man that he can't come before the Father with all that junk. See, that, that has to go. This outer man, this ain't the flesh that we just talked about. We know it's of the earth, earth is going to remain. But when we come forth that inner man, look, all that hatred and malice and envy and strife, all of that, they, he, that can't dwell. That can't be a part of his temple. See, that's what we're being washed and we're being cleansed from that so that we might be a part of that temple. For in him dwelleth no what? Unclean thing. With that, we say hallelujah. Thank you. Our next speaker for this morning's lecture will be Dr. Terry Welsh, Dean of the Lansing, Michigan branch. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Well, good morning, good morning. Good morning. In Yashua. <laughs> Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed the things that I've heard, experienced, been able to enjoy others experiencing. Um, you know, when Yahweh brings his sons together in such a fashion, he really does the work. Um, I want to make a couple of quick comments and then discuss the uh, topic for the, the uh, symposium. By the way, the word symposium is actually, I, I looked that up, it's a very accurate description of what this is, is for, okay? Uh, but in any case, I want to thank, uh, instead of trying to name everybody individually, I'll just say all of the people, the souls, but I'm talking about people at this level, that have uh, done the work that's involved with making this kind of event take place. And sometimes what is involved with that goes back uh, years and years in terms of preparation because in reality I also want to thank, for example, Dr. Edward Mixon because if he had not come to Florida then this particular assembly wouldn't have come together at least in this fashion and definitely Dr. Kinley. And uh, yes, I, I, I am grateful to them. I am very thankful to them. And most of all, because it's really Yahshua that was in them doing the work. And it is Yahshua in anyone doing the work if it is righteousness. Which is going to get to the point to what I'm going to be discussing here in just a moment. But the glory, the honor, the praise is not to flesh, blood, a person as an individual. It goes to that spirit. Even Yahshua said that. He said, why callest thou me good? There is none good but the Father. And then he said it was the Father in him doing the works. Okay? So it's spirit. It is Yahweh doing his work. But Yahweh does all the work. And this is one of the things that becomes confusing to people. 
because people don't always have a full, clear, correct image of who Yahweh as Yahweh Elohim and as Yahshua are. But I noticed even the very first night here, really, pretty much the answers to the questions that are on most people's mind about this topic, those were addressed. And it was real fast. But they were actually addressed. But I'm going to try and just be real focused here. And hopefully Ash will allow this to be, come clear. Uh, one of the speakers, and I mentioned it to her this morning, one of the speakers was up for about 30 seconds and mentioned that she had heard that there is a difference between universal spirit law and the law of the spirit of life. And really, in large part, isn't that the kind of a question? You can word it in different ways, maybe. But isn't that the kind of a question that really is in most people's mind when they read about these things? Okay? Because first of all, it is very clear from what Dr. Kinley taught, wrote, and it's inferred by certain scriptures that the law of spirit controls everything with absolute infallibility, unerring accuracy, right? Okay, and that includes everything that Satan does too. Satan is not a mistake. The sin that was in the Garden of Eden was not a mistake. It was part of Yahweh's purpose. It was a vitally essential part of Yahweh's purpose. Speaker Dr. Brown, just a minute ago, was talking about the necessity of things coming down, going up. Okay? This was referenced, and I think maybe one of the easiest ways to show that, to get to that particular point in a relatively clear fashion, is to have you look here. There are two great mysteries in operation, and they are both formed by the same spirit. And by the way, been a whole lot of crazy doctrinal ideas that have come about in the Institute forever, still exist, they float around. The stuff that formed this one is the same stuff that formed this one. And a lot of people don't believe that. They believe there was good stuff and bad stuff. Light stuff and dark stuff. And it's been named that, that way. That's not true. It's just stuff. The stuff that Yahweh, and I'm using that word because that's... <laughs> It goes back for those of you. Yeah, the stuff that they despoiled from the Egyptians, right, was used under the control of Pharaoh for a very negative purpose when it was there in the land of Egypt, right? Yahweh made sure that children of Israel received that stuff. They despoiled the Egyptians, right? And that stuff was brought out here. Okay? Now, that stuff that became their stuff, and I'm talking about the Israelites now, okay? that stuff, okay? that stuff was used all the way on down, and it was in furtherance of the entire purpose of Yahweh. All right? And he had them, he had specific things that he had called for that they used to make up the tabernacle. All right? And, you know, you can go into all kinds of details. You know, there were nine principal substances that went to make the tabernacle, like nine divine attributes, like nine principal vessels, etc., etc. Right? And you can go through all kinds of different things. Yahweh used this to form the creation. Okay? And these things then operate by the pattern, and they are controlled that way. But it's hard for us to grasp how something as negative as Satan can be really controlled by an infinitely righteous and good Yahweh. Follow me? And that's why I'm going to focus on this. 
understand, and it's already been talked about, okay? See, Yahweh required that things come down in order to come up. One thing that was mentioned was that the purpose of Yahweh, and now we're going to talk about the ultimate and eternal purpose, not just goals and objectives, okay? The ultimate eternal purpose of Yahweh is to glorify Himself. But His ultimate eternal purpose in this creation, remember there's been creations before and will be creations after. The purpose of Yahweh as He has declared it for this creation is to glorify Himself as Yahshua. Yahshua is the Son declared by the Father and Yahshua means what? Yahweh is salvation. Now in order for Yahweh to be what He declared Himself to be, salvation, there had to be a need for salvation. There had to be death in order for life to overcome death. There had to be sin in order for atonement for sin to take place. There had to be all that kind of trouble, pain and suffering, in order for the, the relief, the release, the glorification to become valuable and appreciated. And Yahweh's purpose requires that after we have experienced these things, He says it is through the thanksgiving of many that it redounds to the what? To the glory of Yahweh as Yahshua. Okay? Yahshua is not just a word spoken. Yahshua is the reality of what we should all hopefully be recognizing that Yahweh has brought us through already and is continuing to do. Now some of us have been made to recognize that we were dead, that we were evil, that we were under the control and had the nature of Satan. And that that has been changed. We weren't okay people. Okay? We were not just okay people that were a little bit misdirected. You understand what I'm saying? And unless you come to grips with how bad you were, you won't fully appreciate how good He's made you. Okay? So it does take that. So Satan is the one that Yahweh uses to bring things down. And Satan is controlled and operated by universal spirit law. Now there's a number of scriptures and quotes in the textbook that I could get for, for the sake of time. Maybe I can hopefully say it. If you have questions, concerns, you know we can get the citations. Okay? But Dr. Kinley goes through the textbook and he talks about this archetype pattern being the great embodiment of spirit. This is not just a spiritual body, it's the embodiment of spirit. Okay? And he says that universal spirit law is embodied therein. And he talks about universal spirit law causing concentrated creative motion and he talks about universal spirit law as being that which therefore causes the thing that is in this embodiment to make everything work. And it makes Satan work just as it makes Yahshua work. Okay? In other words, it operates in both, in both mysteries. Okay? Now, maybe I can make a single statement I hope will help clarify this. The law of the Spirit is life in Yahshua. The law of the Spirit is death in Satan. It's the same law. Yes, sir? Yep. You running out of battery? Place it. Okay. Alright, there you go. So the law of the Spirit is life in Yahshua, and the law of the Spirit is death in Satan. Okay? 
And when Yahshua is in you, that is the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah, in you which is your only hope of glory. Make sense? Because then I'm going like right from what it says in Romans 8th chapter. Paul writes that the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah had made him free from the law of sin and death. Right? Now, and it's been discussed. How do you get in Yahshua? You're baptized into him. Also, how do you get into his kingdom, into his, into his family? You're born into it. You don't choose to be in it. You're born into it. Okay? Yahweh has to cause you to be born again. Okay? As we have borne the image of the earthy, which is the first Adam, right? We must also bear the image of the heavenly. Now it's said, in Adam all die, so in the Messiah shall all be made alive. Yes, sir? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Yahweh, let, let me ask you a question. How did everything come down with Adam? Disobedience. That's sin, right? Who was the motivator of sin? Who caused that sin to take place? Satan, right? Now, do you realize Satan was not in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were originally there? He entered the Garden afterwards, after the Sabbath. And Satan cannot enter into Yahweh's rest. So it had to be after the Sabbath, okay? This is also in the pamphlets that you have in your school, okay? Satan was allowed to enter the Garden for a purpose. And listen, as soon as he had contact with Eve, it was over. She had no possibility of resisting him. Okay? His level of power was so far superior to hers that she was putty in his hands, a baby in the hands of a full-grown molester. She had no way of resisting. Impossible. Okay? But Yahweh purposed for that to happen because he had a much greater outcome already planned and this was necessary in order for something greater to take place. Now, how did Satan cause disobedience? Or let me put it this way. What did Satan use with Eve to cause her to sin or disobey. What was it he used? Dis yes, he, right, he did. He used words for deception. Whose words? Yahweh's words. Specifically, his commandment or his law. Right? It was Yahweh's law that Satan used to cause death, destruction, Sin. He went right up to Eve. Has Elohim said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Focused right on Yahweh's prohibition, his commandment. By the way, do you know Adam was given a commission before he was given a commandment? No, I'm serious. He was given a commission before he was given a commandment. Okay? And this is related to the commission that Yahshua gave the apostles. Okay? And you know what the great commission is? That's when Yahshua told his apostles. And by the way, this was not, he didn't tell this to everybody. He told this to 11 men. Okay? He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be saved damned. So again, the gospel, the words of Yahweh can bring about life or death. Don't you realize that death and life are in the power of the tongue? Right? That's, that's right. 
Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Yahshua told them, preach the gospel. Or, you know, you understand what I'm saying? So, but you, you're going to get death, you're going to get life, depending upon your response. And Dr. Kinley showed how Yahweh had set this up to make man accountable for it, which brings about another thing, and I don't want to get too far into the details here. We read John, the first chapter, constantly, and it says that he is the light and the life of all men, right? Okay? He is the light and the life of all men, right? That does not mean that he is the Holy Spirit in all men. Dr. Kinley, on several occasions, and this is documented in his transcripts and recordings, on several occasions explained that this way. He said that Yahweh gave every man, and then he clarifies every man with normal intelligence, a sufficient capacity of intelligence to know the difference between right and wrong when it is presented to him. And then he goes on and he explains why. He says he did that so that Yahweh is justified in sending you to the lake if you reject it. The, uh, reject the truth. Now you check me out on that. There's at least three, I think four places, I believe, you'll find where he basically used that kind of description. He does not talk about that being the Holy Spirit in everybody. He talks about sufficient capacity of intelligence. He makes them accountable. And that goes over into the thing that was on Dr. Kinley's mind before he received it. How is Yahweh going to reconcile the entire world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained? Right? Okay. And he talks about the fact that after Pentecost, he made the Holy Spirit available. Okay? And what happens is that that means that since that time, Yahweh is no longer accepting man's excuses. The, the way the scripture is written, it says, the times of this ignorance, talking about under the Old Testament, from Adam on down through Yahshua the Messiah's time until he died, buried, and raised from the dead. The times of that ignorance, Yahweh winked at. He overlooked it. Why? Because man couldn't do better. There was no way for him to do better. But he says now, meaning since the day of Pentecost, he commands all men everywhere to repent. That means to change. Okay? Now, the change that has to take place, folks, has to be the change of the inner person, the soul. Okay? That soul, folks, was controlled by demons. Was controlled by demons and is controlled by demons until the demons are cast out. How did he say the demons are cast out? By the preaching of the gospel, and then he says, also, Dr. Kinley taught it this way, he says it's when the Holy Spirit moves in that it moves that satanic spirit out. Now you check it out. When the Holy Spirit moves in, he moves that satanic spirit out. Because he talks about it this way, he said that satanic spirit was sitting right up here. In your brain, psychologically speaking. He said he was up there. Satan exalted himself above those others. He sat on the mercy seat. And the scripture that is used in 2 Thessalonians pertaining to that talks about Satan appearing up there and trying to sit in the temple of Yahweh or in the temple of Elohim, showing himself that he is a mighty one or Elohim. Right? He talks about him as an imitator, a pretender. Okay? And he has to be cast out. Folks, people expect a, a result from the casting out of Satan and the moving into the Holy Spirit that they don't see happen immediately. And therefore, they doubt the Holy Spirit. Did you hear me? 
See, people have been accustomed and gotten a tradition in their mind that if you receive the Holy Spirit, all of a sudden your behavior makes you an ideal person. The most desirable person that there could be. Why, there is nothing about you from that point on that anybody could dislike. <laughs> Ain't that way. Let me ask you a question. Even Yahshua and the Messiah, was there anything about him they disliked? Even his name. He was lowly like a worm. There was no comeliness about him that he should be desired. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, right? All those things. And yet you think, and I think, because of the customs and traditions that we've been given, you receive the Holy Spirit, and all of a sudden, you're tall and lean as this guy, and, you know, ath athletic as, as, you know, somebody else, and now, you, you understand what I'm saying? It don't work that way. Okay? They're looking after the outward appearance in, instead of being able to see the heart and condition. Here's the biggest thing that for most of us really changes, is really transformed. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you are compelled to learn and continue learning of Yahweh. You can't help yourself. And if that is there in you, you ought to be very thankful that Yahshua has caused it. And I noticed the, the prayer. Yahshua, make us do the... You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Now, the New Testament, and this gets into the laws and so forth, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm going to have you read it. Uh, get Jeremiah 31, 31, please. This is Yahweh prophesying about the New Testament, okay? And then, um, okay, well, go ahead. Just do it that way, please. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Please read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. Yeah. Although I was a husband unto them, saith Yahweh. Yeah. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. Okay, I want you to listen to what Yahweh says the New Testament or New Covenant is. Go ahead, I please. will put my law in their inward parts. He said, I will put my law in their inward parts. Why and was that necessary to specify? Why was it necessary for him to specify that he would put his law in their inward parts under the New Testament? Remember, he's just delineating here the difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. He says this one is not going to be like the one that was with their fathers back here in the day that he took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they brought. He says it's not going to be like that one. He says, but this shall be the covenant. I will put my law where? The, and write it in their hearts. So apparently, the law under the Old Testament was not in their inward parts. Apparently, it was not written in their hearts. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was written on this heart-shaped tables of stone. And this was placed in the tabernacle. Okay? And symbolically, the people camped around it. So in a symbol of what would be happening in the future, Yahweh's law was in the midst of them. True? But the Spirit itself, the law, which this was only a physical type and shadow, this law of the Spirit was not in their heart or mind. That's why, as it was talked about earlier, the law was imposed upon them. The law was not in them. It was imposed upon them. And I'm going to try and demonstrate, illustrate the difference. The hopefully this will really help. I, I, I pray Yahweh it is. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Continue. Um, I will put my law in their inward parts. 
and write it in their hearts yes. and will be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Right. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, yeah. know Yahweh. Right. For they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh. Yeah, that's right. Now, I, now that, that's an important part too, okay? And that's a very big difference between Old Testament and New Testament, okay? They shall all know me from the least to the greatest, not just some high priest mediator. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Because the only mediator under the New Testament is who? Yahshua. Yahshua the Messiah. And if the New Testament has been confirmed in you, where is the mediator? In you. Part of the question really on a lot of this really has to do with one thing. Do you believe Yahweh? Or don't you? He said he would. Do you believe it? That's the, the bottom line. That's what it comes down to. No, you don't deserve it. No, I don't deserve it. You can consider yourself a worthless piece of nothing if that's the way you... But do you realize that Yahweh valued you, loved you enough, not because you were worthy as an individual, but because of his purpose. He even did this with Israel. He didn't make them his special people because they were great. Right. In fact, they were the least. Right. He did it because he promised it to their father Abraham. And he is faithful in doing his promise. See, the faith of Yahshua is not your faith in him. It's his faithfulness to his promise that he has confirmed and given to you. The question is, do you believe it? Will you receive it? That's in the end what all of this boils down to. Okay? Yeah. Alright. The New Testament is the Holy Spirit in Yahshua in you. And if it's not in you, you have not received the New Testament. You understand what I'm saying? Now, Paul, in Romans 8th chapter, was discussing for him as a Jew, for him as a Jew, what he called the law of the spirit of life, which was in Yahshua the Messiah, and had made him free from what? The law of sin and the death. The law of sin and death. Now, what was the law of sin and death? It was the Old Testament law. The law of carnal ordinances. It was the law that Yahweh spoke here that was imposed upon them. Now, folks, the law itself was good. It was perfect. The people were not perfect. The people could not receive it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It was not in them. And this was a law of carnal ordinances for a carnal-minded people. It represented the law of the spirit of life, but it was actually a law of carnal ordinances. And Paul was devout. In other words, he did everything that he possibly could do to obey the law of carnal ordinances, thinking that Yahweh had given that law in order for people to attain to righteousness by obeying it. And Paul thought he was the stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he goes and he delineates a whole series of things about himself. He really thought he was the stuff. Mm -hmm. So he was actually worse off. Do you understand what I'm saying? But what Yahweh gave this law for was to convict those people of sin. See, they had an arrogant attitude that all those other goyim were sinners. Goyim means Gentiles. You follow me? And it's used as an expression often to everybody else is lowly except the special people, the chosen people. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, we're the chosen people. Okay? And everybody else is goyim. 
Well, in the second chapter of the book of Romans, Paul goes through this in fairly, fairly good detail. He talks about the difference between the Gentiles and the Jew and the law and so forth. But Yahweh gave this Old Testament law to the Jews to do basically one thing. To make sin exceedingly sinful. What do you mean? To prove to them who thought they were righteous that they weren't. Why would Yahweh do that? He set an impossible task before them. Why did he do that? To make them conscious that they needed a Savior. He let them struggle for 1,500 years with that law of carnal ordinances. And there should have been at least one person in 1,500 years who could have satisfied Yahweh, it seemed, to their carnal mind. Mm -hmm. Follow me? Nobody did it. Mm -hmm. Scriptures say there is none righteous, not one. Which really, that scripture doesn't account for the one who actually always was the righteousness, mm -hmm. who is Yahshua. Mm -hmm. So there is none righteous, not one, except for Yahshua. Okay? But when Yahshua came in, he then became the righteousness that everybody else sought. But because they had in their mind a different picture of what righteousness was than the way righteousness truthfully was, they actually rejected righteousness. Righteousness walked right up to them. And they said, get out of my face. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? That was the problem. Okay? They had a false image in their mind of righteousness. A false image of Yahweh Elohim. They were worshiping what? Idols. That's a false image. Okay? So, he talks about the law of sin and death that he was under. Paul was made to realize how bad he was, how much worse he was, because he even thought he was righteous under that law. You follow me? And he was thankful to Yahshua. He talks in the 6th, 7th, and 8th chapters about what happened with him as a Jew, and as him in his personal experience and change from an Old Testament carnal-minded sinner to a transformed, born-again, New Testament, Holy Spirit-occupied, uh, um, um, uh, indwelled. Do you follow me? That's the difference. So he says, the law of the Spirit of life that's in Yahshua the Messiah has made me free from the law of sin and death. This was the law of sin and death, the one that was spoken here. The law of the Spirit of life, the one that this one was a manifestation of. Do you realize the law of the spirit of life existed before Moses ever got those tables of stone? And by the way, when Yahweh showed Moses the creation, he had already spoken the law. Right? And Dr. Kinley goes into why. He says that Yahweh had to speak the law down to Israel before Moses ever went up there and saw that creation to show that the creation came in under universal spirit law that existed before the creation. Universal spirit law is the power of Yahweh to cause concentrated creative motion. Where is that power? It's embodied in Him. This is an embodiment with universal spirit law in it causing the operation. Just like the tabernacle was reared up as a structure, and after that, the cloud descended and went into the tabernacle. That's like the embodiment being raised up, and then the universal spirit law being embodied in it. Adam was raised up, and then Yahweh's 
spirit entered into him. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's showing the, the, the principle that this embodiment has that law of spirit embodied within him and he controls everything. That's why he is the archetype, which means original pattern of what? Just some things? Everything except the bad stuff. Everything. Everything. The entire universe. Follow me? He controls it with unerring accuracy, absolute infallibility. What's that other expression Dr. Kennedy always used to use? What is it? Divine authenticity. That's exactly right. Yes. So Yahweh's got that done. Now Paul never knew before he received the Holy Spirit that there was this spirit law that was in control of everything. Paul was only focused on the law of carnal ordinances that was written on tables of stone and written in books like what Moses wrote and then people using it as literal, physical requirements after the flesh. He did not understand that those things were simply manifestations of the divine law of spirit. And that the divine law of spirit was in Yahshua. He didn't know anything about that until Yahshua showed it to him. So he says the law of the spirit of life in Yahshua the Messiah hath made him free from the law of sin and death. Now folks, you were never under the law that Paul was under. And I think this is something that we just need to come to grips with. I know you know this, but we need to keep this in mind. He said he would make the New Testament with who? The house of Israel and the house of Judah. The house of Israel and the house of Judah. Right? Mm -hmm. That's the same folks he made the Old Testament with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. They were Jews. You're not. Mm -hmm. And even if you are, it's irrelevant. Because Yahweh has now considered the sun and the moon's ordinances mm -hmm. to have passed away. Therefore, mm -hmm. Israel has ceased to be a nation before right. Yahweh forever as far mm -hmm. as the Old Testament is concerned. Mm -hmm. With me? So even if you're a Jew, you're a Gentile. Do you understand what I'm saying? So how did you even get the New Testament? You were adopted into it. After Yahweh made the New Testament with the Jews, then he extended it to the Gentiles and brought them in fully seven years later with Cornelius. You all know what I'm talking about. Okay? You came in by faith, not by works. What do you mean? You weren't under the Old Testament law. You have no works of your own to do in order to receive the Holy Spirit. In fact, truthfully, here's what you must do. You must believe. And even that is the gift of Yahweh. By grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of Yahweh, not of works, lest any man should boast. His disciples even asked Yahshua during the days of his flesh, what shall we do that we might work the works of Elohim? They wanted to be righteous. I understand that. Okay? Yahshua didn't say, guys, you can't do it. Because he was setting up a, a, a thing for a record to make it Come on. He said, well, this is the work of Elohim. Notice he didn't say, this is your work. He said, this is the work of Elohim, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Now, in Ezekiel 36, he also talks about, and I'm not going to take time to get it. You can read it. 36, 26, right? He said, I will cause them to walk in my statutes. Right? Yahweh is the cause. And how does he do that? Universal spirit law in Yahshua, in you. Now, maybe I can demonstrate this real quick. If that law is not in you, but if it's imposed upon you, 
you are still under its control. You are still influenced by it, but you are incapable of performing it. And I'm hoping I can demonstrate this. I, I hope this demonstration works. I need a young athletic person that knows a little bit about how to dance. Please. Oh, huh. Show us a couple of moves. Oh. <laughs> All right, you demonstrated that, right? All right. Oh. Okay. Now we're going to do it again, okay? <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to imitate you. Okay, let's go. You're trying to be nice. I said do what you did before. All right, that's good. I have made sufficient fool out of me. <laughs> May I ask you a question? Which one did it correctly? Right. Okay? Now, do you know why? It was inning. Do you understand what I'm saying? I was trying to imitate. It wasn't part of my nature. Do you follow me? I hadn't learned it, practiced it. It hadn't become a part of me. If you try to do what's right, looking at something from the outside like that, the best you can do is imitate, and even then you're going to be doing it late because he's going to have moved the step before you do. Satan is the great imitator. He tries to be like the Most High. You follow me? And he's much better at imitating than you or me. But folks, if the law is on you, not in you, all it does is cause you to transgress. The moment that I tried to do what he did, I was destined to fail. Do you get the point? I'm trying to use this as a demonstration. That was what the Old Testament did. That was the law of sin and death. There was nothing wrong with the law, but the form and the practice of it that was literal, physical, carnal. You follow me? That's what I look at, and I can't do that. What I, have to, what I would have to do in order to make it work right is have that become part of me. Do you see the difference? And then I'm not trying to imitate his physical moves. I'm just doing it the same thing. The, the law of the Spirit, folks, controls everything. But if it's a law of the Spirit of life, and it's in Yahshua, and Yahshua is in you, it's life. If it's in Satan, and that's in you, it's death. And sorry that it doesn't, it's not pretty, but it's important to understand. It is one or the other. This one says death. This one says life. This is righteousness. This is iniquity. It is the same vision. The same one. It empowers both of them, and they both follow identically the same pattern, folks. I hope that's of some value. I hope it's of some help. And I think this is a marvelous, wonderful, not just a topic, but something that I hope is a realization within us. Praise Yahshua. Continue to learn of him. One last comment, okay? We are down to a point, and I'm talking about in physical history, where it very, very likely can have tremendous, tremendous negative changes that take place. You may have to anytime have this in you as a part of you because you ain't going to be able to be tutored by somebody that knows how to dance. Do you understand what I mean? Spiritually. That may happen. Get it now. Don't delay. Praise Yahshua.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Okay. I didn't freeze up. I'm not freezing up this time. <laughs> so thank you. I have um, the list that we generated for all the schools that noted in the book um, for the brethren. So I, I ran to Staples and made copies. And what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to send an email for all those that were able to leave an email so you can distribute it through all the other brethren, if you would, please. But otherwise, I do have a hard copy. Um, they were, and you can distribute it. You can grab a copy for your school and your brethren's and then make copies when you get there. I was only able to purchase maybe about 99 copies, but and I know we have more than that here, so feel free to help yourself, distribute it. You'll leave them on the table out in the hallway or right up here? Right up front. Out, out front, that's why. Okay, let's make it out front, but let's be, keep in mind that we only have so many limited copies. And then the emails that I have on the list, I will distribute that out and I'll send that out as well and then you can disseminate them as you see fit. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we just thank you for being a part of this. Um, I, oh, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Uh, everybody please stand for the doxology. <laughs> and then sit afterwards. But let's do the doxology. I know. Shut up. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present your soul faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. So the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and forever. Let us all say, hallelujah. All right, now everybody sit down. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. We want to personally thank you for your support. Um, this, first and foremost, this wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the love and mercy of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, the way he laid everything out so perfectly. Um, I'm, I'm going to tell this story. Uh, my best friend worked at this building. Um, and I fussed him out when he first moved from Orlando because... He was having a child. He was leaving the child in Orlando coming here, and he wanted to take care of his grandparents. And I'm like, your grandparents have lived their life. You need to take care of your, you know, your children. And Yahweh basically was like, Seth, shut up, because I got this. And